Professor Tony Dickinson, welcome to Auckland. Um, how are you finding it so far? You've been in the country for a couple of weeks already. Oh, well, exactly. So one, it's a, it's a great privilege um, to be here. I'm really enjoying Auckland, but two and a half weeks in South Island was something pretty special. So That's a beautiful part of the world and not as busy as London. I, I know you're the Professor of uh, Neuropharmacology at the University College in London. Uh, you're here to present. Tell me, how far has the understanding of the mechanisms of pain advanced in recent years? I think in the, the last 30 years has just seen a remarkable change in a very sort of primeval understanding, a vague understanding of, of what pain was in terms of a sensory event. I think we can now put in um, an awful lot of detail into the neuronal changes that occur in, in pain, but probably more importantly the pharmacological changes, and there we can use drugs to interact with those mechanisms, so we understand pain better, we understand how treatments work. And I think the other huge step forward has been the ability to sort of translate from preclinical basic science through to the patient. And it's a, a two-way process. And I think that's the thing that's changed most um, in the last few years, a really understanding of how to relate mechanisms and how treatments work to the pain that individual patients have. Tell us about pain control in both normal and uh, pathopsychological conditions. So I, I think in, in normal conditions, we have a, a, a good supply of agents. We have local anaesthetics, we have opioids, and these are used extremely well and very sort of evidence-based use in post-surgical pain. And that really is treated predominantly extremely well. The, the problems we, we do have is that when we run into the persistent pains, the pains from tissue damage like osteoarthritis, for example, the neuropathic pains where the nerves in the periphery have been damaged by a disease or a lesion. There we are struggling somewhat in terms of the complexity of these mechanisms. But I still think we're, we're understanding what's, what's happening. Um, this understanding is improving and that will, I think, help us in, in, in treating patients. But with the persistent pains, I think the very important aspect is not just to think about pain as a sensation but what pain is doing to that patient, how it makes them anxious, how it makes them depressed, reduces social interactions, causes sleep problems and addressing these I think is as equally important as addressing the pain intensity itself so marrying the emotional and the sensory components of pain is, is pretty critical I think. Now I believe you're a pretty handy tennis player, how's your tennis elbow? Well, this is kind of interesting. <laughs> so I used to play doubles. I switched to playing singles uh, recently and a little bout of uh, tennis elbow. So I kind of strapped it up, soldiered on. Um, and now I'm completely clear again. And uh, topspin backhand is, is working fine. <laughs> Very pleased to hear. Uh, seriously, though, the management and understanding of pain means what for the patient? I think the first point is a simple explanation of what pain is to a patient makes a huge difference. So I, I found this almost anecdotally giving talks on pain to um, a lay audience and all of a sudden people would say I never understood why I had this pain and now I do. So I think a, a simple understanding, a, a simple diagram of how pain changes our nervous system reassures the patient that they're, they're not alone, that there is a knowledge behind what, what's going on. But the, the other important side, I think, is that if we treat the pain, we can automatically improve quality of life. And that's the problem. A patient with persistent pain has, has many um, issues other than just the pain itself, the um, emotional stress, the context of that pain. Is it going to go away ever? Am I stuck with this forever? And I think um, a sort of reassurance that with the right treatment, we should be able to reduce pain and bring back quality of life is a, is a, a really important point. There really have been giant leaps in the understanding of pain over the last few years. What advances, research do you see happening in the near future? So I, I think there's, there's two aspects to this. I think one is um, understanding pain better gives the possibility of novel treatments. There we are dependent on the pharmaceutical industry and clearly they have their own agendas and pressures uh, to deal with. But there is a hope that we might have some new drugs and one strong possibility is drugs that work on peripheral sodium channels could be pain selective drugs and that would be a, a huge step forward. They wouldn't necessarily need to be injected. Um, that could be incredibly helpful. 
But the, the other side of it, I, I, I think, in terms of um, advances, is to try and find which patients are going to respond to particular treatments. This could be pharmacological, different pharmacological agents of different mechanisms, so we can relate a mechanism in a patient to their sensory signs and symptoms, then we can marry a drug to that. But it's equally true for physiotherapy, for psychological interventions, which pen of patients are going to benefit. And I think if we can get away from trying something for several months and failing, and then having to switch the patient to another drug, starting with something effective by predicting, I think could be a huge step forward. Well, thank you for talking to us. Good luck with the tennis and uh, enjoy Auckland. Uh, Professor Tony Dickinson, thank you for t joining us today. Well, thank you very much. And again, it's a great pleasure and an honour to be here. So thank you. Thank you, everybody.